Good morning, Mission Control. Well, today we're going to be starting a whole new series. It's a whole new year uh, here at the Real Martian Ranch, and I'm we're really excited to uh, share it all with you guys. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be a pretty good year, we think. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. Um, if you haven't watched our last video, kicking off the year, I suggest you go back and check that out because uh, we're going to be doing a whole lot of work to get ready for two really big events this year. Uh, the first one is the Martian Challenge uh, 1801 and Martian Challenge 1802. And these challenges are going to occur in, I think it's May and August. And the idea of these challenges is that we need to get the system fully up and running as best we can so that we can actually live for three days off of nothing except for what comes out of this building as far as food goes. And we're going to try to get some energy out of that as well. So we got to define what the challenges are going to look like. So I'm going to you know, please provide your comments. What would you like to see us do? And then we're going to be working really, really hard to get this whole pab up and running so that we have something to eat. Uh, I know I need to lose some weight, but uh, I don't want to starve to death. So we're going to be uh, trying to get that all put together. So in order for us to get that challenge, and, and since we have so many new uh, subscribers, I wanted to go over uh, in a, quite a few series of videos in depth uh, what this system is, what we've been doing, why we've been doing it, kind of over the course of the next uh, couple weeks, actually, it's going to take some time to get through all this. So I'm excited to get started. We're going to start with just what is the system and what it does. And today we're going to be going over aquaponics. So let's get started. All right, let's start off with what is aquaponics. Now, this is kind of a nice place to kind of talk about it because you can see we have our uh, grow bed with grow media in it and we got a bunch of water coming in out of this pipe right here. Now this water is coming in, uh, it's being pumped up from the fish tank which is directly underneath this bed. And we're going to talk about the fish tanks in a video all by itself. Today we're just going to focus on the grow beds and aquaponics here. Uh, but what happens is that the fish, as they go about their business, they eat uh, and then they excrete waste, solid and liquid. And then the water uh, down below in the fish tank contains all those solids and liquids. And then um, the pump grabs them and brings them up and puts them into this grow bed. Now this particular grow bed is on full bore right now. Normally we have valves on them and are cycling them, but this one I just have wide open because uh, we're testing it. So that waste gets up here in this bed and then you think that's it, but it's not. There's something really amazing. The lava rock, uh, this lava rock, we chose lava rock uh, because it's really light and it's really porous. So you can get a lot of microbes into these things and the microbes are really kind of the most important piece of this whole thing. They're what make this all work. In fact, they're so important that scientists really haven't figured out all the things that they're doing. It's just a really, really amazing process. So what, what am I talking about? Well, inside of these rocks, there's two different types of bacteria. There's lots of different bacteria actually, probably hundreds of thousands of different types, but there's two that we care about. They're called nitrifying bacteria, and I, I can't remember their scientific name, but uh, one of the types of bacteria converts ammonia into nitrates, and then, I'm sorry, nitrites, and then there's another one uh, that converts the nitrites into nitrates. And I always get these backwards, so I try to remember it as the eights ate the ites. Uh, so uh, what happens is just, it's just converting, it's just chemistry just basic chemistry. It's just converting that ammonia into nitrites and then nitrates. And that's important because the plants, these little plants, the little green guys, they love nitrites. So the bacteria are hugely important in making sure that the plants can actually eat this fish food. Now, I'm sorry, the fish waste is converted into plant food. So uh, what, that, what does that mean? It means you don't need any fertilizers, no inorganic fertilizers. Now this is important because if you were to do just hydroponics, which essentially would be like using lava rock or hydroton or anything else, uh, sand, fabric, uh, in order to get the, the plants the nutrients they need, you need to add chemicals to the system. That has cost. And uh, you also, some of them are inorganic, they're not good for you. So aquaponics is just a much more natural way to get the fertilizers up without having to buy all of this stuff. So we have 18 grow beds total in this building. I'm just standing in front of one of them that we've kind of let just do its own thing. And we're, we're learning a whole lot about what it takes to grow plants. We weren't green thumbs. I'm certainly still not a green thumb, but Mrs. Martian, she's learning how to be. And so we got quite a few different types. I think we got kale in here, uh, some lettuce, 
uh, that's going just kind of nuts. And we're learning about light, and we're learning about how much water it takes, and we're kind of killing some of them off uh, and just kind of letting them do their own thing. It's really neat uh, just to see them growing. But I could take this and eat it. Nice and crunchy, good flavor. I mean, tastes, tastes like kale. <laughs> Um, so uh, the fish waste comes up here, gets converted by the microbes into uh, plant food, but the process isn't done there. Once we get the plant food, uh, once the plants eat, excuse me, they eat their food, they leave nice clean water. And we return that water right back down into the fish tanks through a bell siphon system. All right, so I'm standing on lane, uh, right next to lane two, and here's a bed that actually started draining right now through the bell siphon. And this white thing in the middle is the bell siphon. And what it has, it has a standpipe in the middle of it. And as the water comes up that pipe, it goes, it, as it fills the bed, it goes up the pipe until it gets up to the top. Then it starts flowing over the top of it. Now, normally it would just kind of trickle down, but what makes it a bell siphon is you put another cover over the top of that standpipe, and as the water goes down, it actually sucks the air down through it and creates a siphon. And then that whole thing fills up with water and you get a, a deluge out the bottom there. Now that's important for us because we need height above the bed from the water where the drain is at so that that water drops pretty heavy and stirs up the water uh, in the fish tank. And you might guess why that is important and has, it's the oxygen. We want to disturb the, the surface water down there so that we actually mix water or oxygen in with the water and we've uh, now brought oxygen back to the fish. So we have a single pump that runs this entire lane and the pump uses less than one amp of electricity. We used to have a lot bigger pump on this uh, that used 12 amps, but it's totally unnecessary. You don't need that big a pump to do this job when you have automation that changes which bed is filling when. So aquaponics is pretty darn cool. And uh, another reason we chose to go with it uh, is because we can go vertical. And that's why these shelves are so tall is we have the requirement that we want to make one square foot of land worth two. Well, that means here's one square foot right here. This is, I could, I could grow this stuff in the ground if I really wanted to, but I want to make it worth two. So I can increase efficiency, which aquaponics can do uh, because of nutrients from the fish. I can also go vertical and I can add a whole bunch of different vertical tower systems on here. Uh, flat bed, horizontal beds, uh, vertical towers like zip grow towers, uh, put all those things on here. So. Um, this is the vertical aquaponic system that we're putting in place. Now, a lot of the beds here don't have anything in them yet. And that's because we simply haven't had a chance to actually focus on growing stuff in them. We've been too busy building the system, building the building, retrofitting the building with my mistakes, the solutions to my mistakes, etc. cetera. Uh, so we've had a lot of stuff that we've had to make updates on. So one of the reasons why we haven't been able to get to the aquaponics as much as we want, that's really the focus on, as far as the food generation coming out of this system, is because of these little buggers right here. These are the microgreens. In fact, these are radish microgreens. We currently have three types of microgreens that we're growing, kale, radish, uh, and peas. Out of all of them, I'm only a fan of kale. Radish tastes cool, it's good on sandwiches, Kale is great, it's like eating kale. And peas, well, they taste like peas and honestly I've just never been a fan of peas. But they're pretty amazing. Uh, we chose to go with microgreens. The reason we're even growing them actually is because we needed to generate money to help pay for operating this system. Right now we're doing pretty good uh, on microgreens. We are selling in winter here $1,200 a month in microgreens. And it would have been more, but there's a pretty big fire in the area before winter that really cut down tourism to the area. So the restaurants slowed down and that we lost sales on that. And then uh, we also, uh, winter just came and that slowed down sales quite a bit. So for our heating costs, we need at least $1,600 a month right now to heat this building. Uh, and we definitely want to heat the building. We, if you compare where we were at last year, we had tarps over these things and it, we're using a diesel heater. It was. It was a mess, but this year we're using a nice big propane heater that eventually we want to convert to methane uh, to run from the digester. But uh, I digress. Uh, so we're you know $400 short of where we need to be. Uh, but if we would have been running all year long last year, 2017, we would have had enough to pay for all of our heating costs. We'd still be a little short, 
from our operating costs. Uh, but that's where we're hoping YouTube and Patreon will come in, is that we can pay for operating costs that way. So uh, we want the system to pay for itself. That's certainly a big deal, and, and the microgreens help us do that uh, so that we can really work on learning the aquaponics, uh, the digester, the solar, everything else. So uh, what are microgreens, you might be asking. Well, let's, uh, let's go look at kale here and uh, kind of give you a better shot. So here are my favorite, the kale microgreens. And what microgreens are is there, there's nothing really special about them. They are just the first true leaves of a normal plant. So in this case, the first true leaves of kale. So the seeds that we get, they're organic seeds. Uh, we get them from high growing, high mowing organic. Um, and mm, there's good stuff. You just plant them in the tray here. We use cocoa core in the bottom and we're looking at different ways of growing them. We don't like the cocoa core. We want to go to a mat system, more hydroponic type of stuff. Less work, that's why. Um, each one of these little plants, just, just that little plant right there that I just ate, has 40 times more nutrients, right? 40 times, I think it's 40 times more nutrients um, than the entire plant. So that one little thing ha is just filled with nutrients. Um, so people love them, chefs love them as a garnish, put them on uh, salads and stuff. So kind of the high-end restaurants type of thing, that's where the market's at. That's not really what our mission is. Again, uh, we didn't set out to provide sustainable food and energy for rich people. Uh, we want to help rich people, of course, we want to help everyone, but really it's just about normal people. So microgreens are just a means to an end. We don't want to be doing it long term. But they're really delicious. Um, you can grow a whole bunch of different things as microgreens. I know sunflower is another uh, popular one. I think it's Devil's Club is another one. There's quite a few of them uh, that are out there. But one of the big challenges with microgreens for us, and uh, we're kind of limited in how many we can do, is just how much time it takes to process them. And we're really considering doing something different there. We'll talk about some of the challenges that we have with all this stuff in future videos. Right now, I just kind of want to introduce everything. So be patient. We'll get to all the troubles and problems that we've had. But microgreens, good stuff, very healthy. Uh, not something you'd be taking to Mars, not something that you'd be growing in the system sustainably. Uh, we're purely just doing it for, for uh, a profit to help, well, we're not even making a profit, but to help pay for this system to generate revenue. So yeah, we've been working on aquaponics, at least building everything for quite a few months now, just trying to get everything built, of course. And we're at the point now where Mrs. Martian, who is the operator of this system, is gonna start actually taking over and really planting everything. And so instead of sporadic uh, plants in here, we're gonna have purposeful built ones. And we're gonna step our way into it. We're only gonna get on the first two lanes, or I'm sorry, on each of the lanes, we're gonna do the first two beds. So where you're standing right now is the first bed, and where I'm standing is the second bed. That's 24 linear feet. Each bed is 12 feet long, two beds, that's 24 feet. That's 24 linear feet of grow area times four that we're gonna have, and we're not gonna be worried about going vertical quite yet. We wanna get the lower stuff figured out. Means I still have to put lights in, we have to get the pumps and everything all dialed in. Uh, we have some other challenges that we'll be talking about in future videos with the uh, bell siphons, evaporation, all those types of things. We'll go over all that. But we're excited to really get this stuff going. Well, let's talk about Mars real fast. You know, I know it's kind of confusing sometimes. I always ask, why are, what's this Mars thing? You're really trying to go to Mars? The answer is no, I'm not really trying to go to Mars. It's fun to think about. But as an engineer, when you're designing this system, if you think about putting this system on Mars, it actually helps you design a better system for Earth. So by thinking about Mars, we can do better here on Earth. And that's what we're doing. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at uh, aquaponics, water. All right, so if you grow normal uh, agriculture, then you end up using 90% more water than aquaponics. And why is that? It's because of evaporation. When you are growing out in a field and you use your big sprinklers, and they're going, all your drip systems, all that. Drip systems are better than sprinklers, but um, a lot of the water evaporates before it ever hits the plant. In aquaponics, the water gets right where it needs to be when it needs it, and you reduce evaporation a lot. Now, we still have evaporation in here. In fact, that's the biggest way uh, that we lose water. But to put it in perspective, we haven't added any water to all four of these lanes at all, except for in summer, when we had, uh, yeah, so it would be like six months. How many months? Mm -hmm. Or like four months since we've added any water to the system. Four months without adding any water. That's pretty cool. So 
why is that important? How does, how does Mars relate? Well, on Mars, there is no water. <laughs> you have to make all your water through chemical processes. Uh, and here on Earth, we're running out of fresh water. So while Earth and Mars, there's really no comparison, you know, 96, what is it? 70% of our land uh, or of our planet is covered in water. Uh, so it's no real comparison, but 96.5% of all of our water is salt water, meaning you couldn't use it for agriculture without removing the salt, which means a chemical process, which means in general, water is a scarce resource that should be protected. So when we think of it on Mars as a scarce resource that's really, really important, and we wanna use as little of it as possible, and we translate that here to Earth, it only helps us, it doesn't hurt us. So it helps us be a little more conservative, uh, make sure we have a sustainable system, and make sure that we capture, as recapture, as much of that evaporation as we possibly can, which we'll talk about on a future episode. Well, there you go. That's a quick overview of just the aquaponics. Like I said, we have a lot of stuff to go over. It's gonna take quite a bit of time to get through everything. Uh, so please add your comments, things that you'd like to see, questions that you have. I like doing subscriber Q&As, so uh, please do put your questions down. Uh, you can also shoot me an email at trm at therealmartian.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget, you could also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.